that my thoughts are very simple. I totally uh, uh, cannot accept what, hap what was happening. I, uh, I not only uh, criticize, I disagree with, with what happened. And Which uh, bit of what happened? A bit of uh, use of force, certainly. So the killing of uh, the killings people. is uh, appalling, and not only appalling, it's uh, unacceptable in any 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 civilized civil civilized society. There has been a, a warrant issued for the arrest exactly, yeah. of the president. Yes. As far as you know, did he give the orders to shoot to kill? Well, uh, I haven't seen neither written nor did I hear any 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 oral uh, commands but of course I can assume safely that what those what was happening uh, on the streets of Ukraine could not happen without the blessing of the president did you know him personally because you were deputy foreign minister before yes well I did know him uh, when I was deputy foreign minister, he was the prime minister. Did you ever go to the the palace, which has this private zoo and uh, no. collection of cars and so no. on? No, <laughs> never. <laughs> no, no, no. So was the only place I was was the administration of the president. Did did it come as a surprise to you that he was living this way? Well, uh, you know, yes, of course. And uh, I read in the papers uh, probably those uh, pieces that uh, everyone. I just wondered how embarrassed you feel about not only the killings which happened last week, but also the the way the president lived. Well, honestly, it's a, it's a quite embarrassing uh, to to be in this situation. But like I said, we are diplomats, uh, and diplomats sometimes find themselves in a quite embarrassing situations until the. We had to. Because you were called in to the British Foreign Office. Uh, of last course, week. I called in to the Foreign Office. Uh, I still, I was and continue to be a communicator. Did Did you apologise for what had happened, or did you seek to justify what happened last well, week? Well, uh, what I did in the Foreign Office is in the Foreign Office. Well, I, the reason I ask is that protesters might say that you are a chameleon. That last week you your job was to defend the Yanukovych government. Those this people, week you criticise it. Those people uh, should understand the, the essence of the job of a diplomat. If I could, I would have apologised. But, but you it's, didn't. It's not a point of my apology. I am not. Uh, I mean, I apologise to my own people. That's what I can do. You're doing that now. Which I do. Did you think at any point of quitting your job because of what had happened and you obviously have to represent Ukraine and this is a very personal question so I think uh, I have a right not to answer that question well can I assume the answer is yes from your non-reply uh, I can only reiterate that this is a very personal question and I with your permission will not answer that question thank you very much ambassador thank you well, I've got two guests with me here on the streets of Kiev. Anastasia Yanovitska, she's a human rights worker, and Yuri Levshenko from the right-wing Svoboda Party. Anastasia, let me start with you. What do you expect from your new generation of politicians to fix this country? Well, first of all, they need to make sure that the reforms that need to be in place to renovate the country, to rebuild the country, are in place. And most of all, that the people who were unjustly put to prison are freed and that the justice uh, is, uh, is paid on to those who, who cause this violence, who kill these people. What about uh, the ex-president? What should happen to him? Well, first of all, Ukraine has to ratify the Roman statute in order to bring him to the tribunal for uh, crimes against humanity. But not only him, everybody who executed, everybody who funded, and everybody who ordered those orders to kill people. Yuri Levchenko, that's not too much to ask for, is it? Absolutely not. I think it's uh, almost the, all, the whole list. But I would add uh, that we need social justice also for Ukraine in the long term, because right now we have an oligarchic economic system whereby uh, ordinary Ukrainians have absolutely no uh, ch ch chance in their lives. They can't get a job, they can't send their children to school and to university, they can't even have a ho decent, decent holiday in the summer. So you, you say an oligarchy system, but the oligarchs are plotting the future of this country benignly, one might say, as we speak. I mean, they're carving it up amongst them. Well, I, th I think it's up to us and up to, up to the people on the Maidan to stop this from happening, and uh, that's why I think uh, in reality our revolution has only 
only begun and it hasn't even ended, it's only beginning and we have to make sure and have to keep our pressure up on the uh, political establishment but for a new generation of politicians to come in force. But you can't carry on demonstrating here ad infinitum, can you? And this country is grinding to a halt. That's what you think. And people after three months, they have learned how to survive. They know what they stand for, and it's a whole new nation. It's a strong Ukrainian nation of people who know how to defend their rights. And, and tied into Europe as part of Europe? Possibly. We haven't seen a lot of support that we expected from Europe over the last three months. Unfortunately, the sanctions came in a bit too late and too costly was the price we paid. Well, I, would, I would say that we've always been part of Europe and we are Europe. Uh, there's a difference between Europe and European Union. Those are two different exactly. uh, definitions, two different facts. And it's about money as well. Isn't it? I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. I'm sorry, that was briefer than I hoped it would be. Yeah. Anastasia Latoviska and uh, Yuri Yevchenko, thank you thank very you. much for talking to us. Um, that's all we have for now from the streets of Kiev, where it has been yet another rather breathless but extremely exciting day to remember. Back to you in London, John. Matt Fry, not least managing Ukrainian names quite beautifully.